check the mic and make sure it sound right. Hi, I'm DK Will. This is DK Will. Talk about it. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the resilience that's required. If you are an investor in some of these non-traditional assets that we're invested in, crypto assets, particularly XRP and all the Xs, even the Bitcoins, Ethereums, the HBARs or whatever, but particularly XRP, we've been on a roller coaster ride. And it's probably going to go up to the peak here soon. And one thing you want to avoid is uh, becoming emotional in your in your investing strategies. It's okay to feel the euphoria and everything that comes, but make sure you make decisions without emotion. But if you if you were invested for those two and a half years of drama with the SEC, then you understand what it means to be emotionally emotionally resilient. Uh, who who can beat that? <laughs> Anyone invested in the Iraqi dinar who has been invested for years, like I mentioned in some of my videos, people who are invested in the Iraqi dinar have been invested for decades. You can say two decades at this point. That's a long, long time to be invested in something and have the resilience to deal with it. And yes, it's an emotional roller coaster. And if you're not careful, of course, you become a, you can become a drug addict on the hopium that I make it a point not to uh, peddle. But so this video is going to just go over this article by a Dr. Courtney Warren done on August 6th. And it's a Harvard psychologist and it says if you use any of these nine phrases every day, you're more emotionally resilient than most. Now understand you don't have to use all nine every day, but if you use one of them every day in some circumstance or another, and I, you know, maybe it doesn't have to be every day, but hey, this is what the lady says. And so to help us retain our emotional resilience, because you'll probably recognize yourself in some of these, I'm going to go over this article as uh, one of the, to the topic of this video. I might do another one here shortly afterwards on something else I got lined up, but let's do this one. If you use any of these nine phrases every day, you're more emotionally resilient than most, I would assume, most people. So, number one. I can get through this. Let me read the intro. Emotionally resilient people are deliberate in their response to painful experience. They allow themselves to grieve, remind themselves of what they are grateful for, and focus on what they can control in the moment. But as a Harvard-trained psychologist, I've seen so many people struggle with this. It takes effort, practice, and mental strength. If you use any of these phrases every day, you are more emotionally resilient than most. Those are the words of Dr. Courtney Warren. I can get through this. Emotional resilience is associated with grit and mental toughness. There's an understanding that we have a strong and that we have to be strong and overcome adversity without letting it break us. Similar phrase, as much as I hate this, I can survive it. This too will pass. You know those type of phrases? That's number one on the emotional resilience. If you've ever been up and you've ever been down, and I certainly have, and you get back up and do it again, and you know that you can do it again, or at least you're going to give it all you got, then you probably also use number two. I'm not going to let myself be a victim. Being resilient means that when you experience the pain of mistreatment, you shift your perspective from I'm a victim and powerless to help myself to how can I grow from this? Similar phrase, even though I was a victim in this situation, I won't let it define me or ruin my future. Folks, let me put it to you simply on that one, because so far I'm identifying with both of these in all frankness, and I hope that you are too. And if not, hey, here's some guidance. Don't let yourself become a victim, because when you allow yourself to see yourself as a victim, you can acknowledge yourself as being the victim, like it says here, even though I was a victim. But if you begin to take on the victim persona you do exactly what it says here you become powerless you are giving your power to the perp you're giving your power to the perpetrator that's a little dk embellishment on number two i'll try to avoid doing that but hey this is not dr warren we'll talk about it this is dk we'll talk about it let's go to number three number three life is hard Resilience is associated with a basic acceptance that life isn't always fair and that we all experience emotional hardships. 
accepting this truth helps people to not think take things as personally when undesirable undesirable events happen similar phrase i won't always be happy with how things play out but it's part of the journey i'm gonna try not to keep giving you glimpses of the next one but it's okay if you see it but let's follow along let's go to number four. Oh, there it is <laughs> this too shall pass so i should have left it out of um i can get through this this too shall pass resilient people believe that setbacks and challenges can feel horrible in the moment, but that nothing in life is permanent. It doesn't mean that the pain will go away entirely, but it does mean that we can work to make them less traumatic and damaging to us over time. Similar phrase, each day is an opportunity to feel a little better. Are you seeing yourself yet? as emotionally resilient we're at number four and the lady said that these are nine phrases so let's cut past the middle and get into number five what can i learn from this openness to experiences and the ability to shift your perspective hmm paradigm whisper to shift your perspective from why did this happen to me victim to what can i take from this to help me grow can help you better navigate through life's inevitable ups and downs i literally in my prayers have taken that approach to some uh traumas and dramas that i've been going through and 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 i just to share this is dk we'll talk about it. let me tell you a little bit about myself in my prayers when undergoing these hardships that i've been faced with lately I ask God, what can I learn from this? Because, see, God doesn't try you with evil things. He doesn't, you know, God doesn't make bad things happen to you. Satan makes things, bad things happen to you, and he wants you to blame God. No, God makes the way out. God is love. He, does, he can't be tried with evil, nor does he use evil to try anyone. So if anyone teaches you that, they're not teaching you about the true God. They're teaching you about Satan tricked you to believe he's God because bad things come from J Satan, not God. Remember the story of Job. So what God is really saying, just like he did with, if you are a Christian, our Savior Jesus Christ, and allowed him to go through that, he certainly wasn't causing it to Jesus, but he knew Jesus could handle it. And he was there to help him when asked. So whatever you're going through, God knows you can handle it. Focus on what can I learn from this? Similar phrase, there's always a gift even in the darkest experiences. I just need to figure out what it is. Hello. How can I use this experience to empower and transform me? Six, I need some time. A key component of resilience is emotional flexibility or the ability to regulate your feelings and reduce their intensity in a given situation. I'm working on that because I get a little passionate sometimes. Mastery over this can help us feel empowered during challenging times. I can remember a time earlier in my life when I was so full of spirit that I could feel the calming effect. I'm working on that. Just like I said, nobody's perfect. Okay? Don't be hating. <laughs> Similar phrase. I'm feeling a strong emotion. So I'm going to take a moment before I respond or make any big decisions. Can you see where that would imply to your investment strategy right there? I'm feeling a strong emotion, so I'm going to take a moment before I respond or make any big decisions. Well, here's what I'm saying. Make your decisions now and then have the discipline to stick to them. For instance, XRP. If you have a target that you're going to get rid of 15% of your XRP if it hits the all-time high, then do it. You still have the other 85%. If your goal is, I'm going to take all the money I put in plus a 25% profit, which is the way I like to invest, because then you get your money back and you get a profit and whatever happens from there, you can't lose. So if you say, I'm going to give up 20% of my XRP for a 100%, 125% return on my total investment, then do it when that time comes. Otherwise, don't get emotional here. Sit back and think for a minute before you make any big decisions because here's the thing about it once you let it go it's gone once you let it go it's gone so plan on letting it go 
but don't let it go out of emotion. And that applies just as much as when it's falling down as when it's going up. When it's falling down, my only thought is, can I afford to buy any more? Moving on. Number seven. I still have things to be grateful for. I just said that to my wife today. We're hardwired to notice threats to our well-being. Hardwired. You hear that? To notice threats to our well-being. But people who are resilient find a way to turn towards the positive, even in times of difficulty. Similar phrase. I may be struggling, but I can find a way to be thankful for the good things in my life. I guarantee you, if you are able to listen to this video and watch this video, aside from the wonderful blessing of getting to hear DK Will talk about it, there is something in your life to be thankful for. There is something or someone or both or all to be grateful for. Even if it's just the ability to sit, listen, and learn, to breathe, eat, and sleep, there's something to be grateful for. I'm sure it's more than that, but that's how simple it gets. Number eight, it is what it is. The key to resilience is not denying reality or seeking out a reason that makes us feel better about why something happened. When we arrive to a place of radical acceptance, the situation has less power over us. Kind of ties in with being a victim, doesn't it? Don't be a victim. Similar phrase. I have to see reality for what it is, even if it's not what I want. So I can move forward. Paradigm Whisperer. I have to see what it is. Paradigm Whisperer. Notice it says, I have to see. Nobody can make you see. I hope you see. Drum roll, please. And for the last one, number nine, I'm letting this go. Staying mired in resentment, wanting retribution, or focusing on payback keeps us holding on to past pain. Developing resilience requires getting to a place where we can see difficult life circumstances for what they are and actively choose to let them go. Now, don't don't for one minute think that forgive means forget. No, remember what they've done to you. But forget in the sense is don't mire, be mired in resentment. Don't want to get even. And that's 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 another hardwired thing that we need to overcome. Similar phrase. Forgiving this doesn't mean it was OK. It just means that I am no longer letting it weigh me down. Dr. Courtney S. Warren, Ph.D., is a board-certified psychologist and author of Letting Go of Your Ex. Ooh, <laughs> wow. She specializes in marriages, love addiction, and breakups, and receives her clinical training at Harvard Medical School. She has written nearly 50 peer-reviewed journal articles and delivered more than 75 presentations on the psychology of relationships. Well, that can absolutely tie into our, our relationships with others. But this, folks, I'm trying to help you tie it into your relationship with your investments, too. OK. I hope this was helpful. The link will be in the description. If you like. Tap on that like button, you ain't gonna break a finger. Unless you smash the computer. And if you really like. And want to keep this coming. Subscribe. Make a comment. I am involved in the comments. And I'm still small. So every comment gets a heart. Unless it's not so good. I might give you a like if it's a bad one. But if it's a good. If it's a comment. I thank you for commenting in any case. And I give hearts galore on comments for now. And I got a little special thing. The first comment always gets pinned. First, that's just the thing I've been doing since I started, and I will keep doing as long as I can keep up with who's the first comment. So far, that's pretty easy to do. Just as it was to cover this information for you. I'm DK Will, and this is DK Will Talk About It. Be emotionally resilient. 
and I've talked about it. Have a wonderful day. Check the mic and make sure it sounds right.